what are third-party listings and why are they important? For many devices on the market, there exist listing standards that are meant to create the safest products on the market, and often it's a requirement. For example, it's a requirement to have a third-party listing for an RV OEM to put that battery on the RV. So let's talk specifically about lithium ion battery listings and specifically for storage batteries because there exist a couple of different listings. So first of all, there are listings for the cell, for the individual prismatic or cylindrical cells that are inside the packs. There is a underwriter's laboratory or UL1642 listing, 1642, or an IEC 62133 listing which has also been harmonized into a UL62133 listing as well. Those are specific to the cells. But 62133 can also be applied to a pack. So there's different tests that are done to ensure that the pack is safe as well. In terms of pack listings, in addition to 62133, we have UL2054, 2054, or UL1973, 1973. In each one of these listings, there are a series of tests that are performed by a third party that test the uh, electrical, mechanical uh, shock stability of the, of the product. That is, if you short circuit the battery, if you drop the battery, if you throw the battery, if you have vibrations, if you have impact, what happens? Can we ensure that the battery, the pack, can handle these types of situations? So if you look at our batteries, this, for example, is our BB112H, 100 amp hour, 12 volt battery. And there are a couple of identifiers on the label to suggest that it is third party listed. We have the ETL label, which is indicative of the Intertech lab in Michigan. That is the specific lab that did the testing on this particular model of battery. And we have two separate listings for ETL, the 2054, and the 62133. So this is listed to two different standards. In addition, we have the UN38.3, which is not a UL standard, um, but rather it is a Department of Transportation requirement for shipping a lithium ion battery. Now, UN38.3 can be self-declared, but we actually pay the Intertech Lab to do the, the uh, thorough testing for us. Now, the reason that we have multiple listings is because the testing isn't identical in each case. So, for example, for 2054, that is specific to a portable battery. So, we have to incur a drop test, for example. The batteries need to be able to be dropped from a meter high onto a slab of concrete three successive times at random orientations. And this needs to be done for three different batteries. So this is just one example. Um, for the UN38.3 test, we have vibration tests. Um, in all cases, we have electrical tests where we have to short the battery, or in, even in some cases, we have to uh, fault the BMS, that is short the BMS, damage the BMS, and then redo the uh, short circuit tests and ensure that a fire doesn't occur. So these are rather stringent tests. Another listing is the 1973 listing, which is a precursor to the 9540 listing, which is a requirement for an on-grid storage system. And in those tests, there's a little bit more redundancy in that it doesn't uh, allow for any sort of errant voltages or currents, even when the uh, primary BMS is faulted. So for 2054, we can put a dead short on the battery and ensure that there's a dangerous situation doesn't occur. In 1973, that type of test isn't done, but it doesn't even allow for the possibility of a dead short because you have some redundancies. So each test is different. It really depends on what the application is. So we opted for 2054 because if you have a portable battery on your RV, you can take that battery out and use it for anything else. It's still a listed battery. It's still safe for you to apply. Um, whereas for larger systems, we generally opt for a 1973 listing, which is really more for the entire system where we can have redundancies, extra switches, uh, etc. So in conclusion, the Underwriters Laboratory has created a set of standards with specific tests for different applications for lithium-ion batteries. 
you can pay a third-party lab to test to these standards, which is what we did with the Intertech Lab as one example. And depending on the application of your battery, you might have one or two or different types of tests. But if you have, uh, if you're going to ship the battery, the UN38.3 test is absolutely required.